Hi guys, this is Michelle. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I make my velvet pumpkins. This video is the first in a series of five pumpkin DIYs that I'm going to be posting over the next few days. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Um, and I just want to tell you that in my pumpkin series, I will be sharing my tips and tricks and all things pumpkin that I know with you. So I hope you can join me. So let's get started. So here's our supplies we're going to be using today. We're going to be using a glue gun and glue sticks, heavy duty thread and a needle, a tape measure, fabric cutting scissors, a two hole button, a lint roller, optional, a writing utensil, optional, poly pellets for using in your pumpkin, optional, stuffing, if I didn't already mention that, and of course a stem of your choice and some stretch velvet. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about stretch velvet. First of all, I have a, this is a pumpkin that was made a few years ago using this cute little shirt and this was bought at the thrift store and I've used up most of it. Um, it was a sleeveless little shirt. It's a beautiful shade of green and this was from the thrift store, like I said. It's really lovely and a lot of times you can find colors in this stretch velvet that you can't find at the store. This is also another shirt that I have cut into quite a bit. Um, you can see the back is all this is all cut up. I also have, I was out shopping and looking for some orange and this, my husband was with me and I said, I'm looking for orange velvet and I don't even know where he found this, you guys, because I went all through the clothing and he came back with this full length. I mean, this was a full length women's nightgown and this is what's left. It's been cut up. I made a very large pumpkin or two out of it. It was really beautiful actually a lovely gown uh, that some somebody must have really loved and anyways really nice that was a shirt or I'm sorry that was a nightgown and then this is a fabric here this is like a really pretty like a pink mauve and that was a by the yard so that's just to give you an idea and like I said I've been buying these for years and um, I use a little here and a little there always wash your things that you're buying at the thrift store and um, velvet shows up in the darndest places you know this stretchy stuff this is what we're going to be using and this is an apricot that I just bought a few days ago at Joann's um, October 2023 and it's called apricot it was rather pricey but I it was $19.99 a yard I bought a half a yard and it was 25% uh, off so it cost me $7.50 and I'll tell you that you can go to the thrift store now and honestly things cost so much more money so I got quite a few uh, quite a few pumpkins out of this piece of stretch velvet so far I've got about nine pumpkins here I believe eight actually that I've made using this apricot. This is the mauve color. And then of course, like I said, this is the green and this was a shirt. It's so pretty and these are so squishy and um, just really fun. Save your pumpkin stems, but also you probably, like I said, this velvet shows up in all kinds of places, not just by the yard, but I'm always looking to see if they get new colors in it at the, at the fabric stores. Um, and you never know what you're going to find. Also, there's always party dresses that are velvet. And, you know, velvet can be used for so many different things. And there are... In the baby clothes, they always have sweet little things, little girls dresses and things. And you can also even probably look through your own closet or through old clothes you're getting rid of and find a something, a little girl's dress or something like that. Um, great for a lot of projects. I use it for different things. So anyway, that's just a little bit about velvet. And um, so let's get started. Okay, so like I had said, we're going to use this apricot um, velvet today to make our pumpkin. And 
you don't even really have to measure this, but for your video, for this video today, I'm going to measure and trace a circle for you. So this is my um, erasable air erasable pen. So this is a great thing to have if you're into even you don't even have to be into sewing, just tracing things, little projecty things. It's great because it dissolves and it just it's kind of like disappearing ink. OK, so we're going to trace the side, the top circle of this container that I have some stuffing in here today for you. And I wanted to show you a measurement and a circle that I'm using. This is about eight and a half inches around. Um, just so you know for size and these pumpkins this this is such a forgiving project like I said you don't need to mark anything you don't have to draw a perfect circle even and I'm just going around here and if you wanted to get the most out of your velvet and you want to make you know as many pumpkins a certain size as you want then you might want to measure so I have our eight and a half inch circle um, traced here and I'm just gonna roughly cut and let's say you wanted to make a set of these for like to put on a on a table setting or in a bowl or something like that then you may want to do them the same size and so then you would want a pattern but mine I kind of have made so many of them I just kind of eyeball it now so I'm just gonna cut out my circle and like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to see the edges of any of this. They're going to be all hidden. And this is the erasable pen, which I love. This is going to give me Somewhere between this pumpkin, it's it's a little, it's going to be smaller than this one, and this is a real stem. I have all different types of stems here, but this is a real stem that we dry, cut off the pumpkin and dried last year. It's going to be somewhere between the size of that and more like maybe the size of this little cutie here. The fabric comes in pretty close. So this one is, you know, a little ends up being about about four and a quarter inches wide when it's sewn and that's going to depend on how much filling you put in there too how big your pumpkin ends up being so I didn't overly stuff these they are just kind of loose and you can you know kind of do what you want squish it up or or whatever so anyways just to give you an idea of size there Here's our needle and our heavy duty thread. You can use heavy duty, doesn't matter what color, because again, you're not gonna see it. You could use dental floss, and you wanna knot the end of your thread. Okay, I have a knot there. And we're just going to start going back and forth around the edges of our fabric. I'm gonna do this all the way around our circle. We're going to go a little bit more than halfway and then we're going to put some filling in there. This project is by request in my series and because it's the fanciest one I thought we would do this one first and these are just so pretty. You can have these out until Thanksgiving, I think. Mine usually stay out, depending on the colors you make them. So we kind of have like, what looks sort of like a little bonnet. And we're gonna use some of this poly pellets. These are great, and thank you to those, you know who you are, who bought these for the cornhole game in the 11th hour before the, uh, so I could make the bean bags. And you guys know who you are. Thank you so much. 
and I'm putting a couple teaspoons in, or tablespoons, and this is optional, but they do give your uh, pumpkin some weight, and I never put rice or anything at, in, okay, sorry, this is a two pound bag, it goes quite a long way, I believe two bags of these were purchased and gifted to me for, like I said, the cornhole game the that my son made for his graduation party, he did the whole thing, and um, the only thing I had anything to do with was telling him kind of the design that we were wanting, and the colors, and making the bean bags. So this is great stuff. I don't ever put any rice or beans or anything like that in my stuffed toys. Um, you know, it sounds like a great idea. And we're going to put a little stuffing in here. And um, rice is going to get little... With rice, you're going to have some issues, uh, if not this year, maybe in following years when you take out your your lovely velvet pumpkins and find that some little critter in your attic or your basement or wherever you store your things got into the, uh, smelled the rice or the beans or whatever and got into it. So I either go with something like those pellets or just the polyfill. No food in my stuff. That's just me, but um, see how nice that's gathering up there? This is such a quick little fun project to sew, and we're still just going around. It gathers right up, very forgiving, and So you, again, you can put as much stuffing or as little as you want in there that those beads just kind of give it a little bit of weight in there. You can kind of hear the beans and the stuffing. It's not, you know, there's, there's not that much in there. We could put a little bit more in. This is not a big pumpkin, so I'm not going to overstuff it. Okay, so we're all um, all the way around, gathered up, pulled my thread tight here. Hopefully you, hopefully you can see this. Okay, I've got my thread pulled tight, and now I'm just going to kind of make a knot and so this doesn't undo. So I made a loop, and I'm going through there twice with my needle and pulling it tight and I'm just going to close this close this up just a little bit more and this is very forgiving you just want to get that pulled tight okay so it looks like we're We'll go one more time across just to get that pulled tight. Going through our little loop there of thread two times, pulling tight. Okay, now what we've got is our little button here. Okay, and this is a two hole button, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. We're going to pinch this down in the middle and make a little like a little tuft in the middle and we're going to do that so that our stem will kind of sit down a little bit. You could just leave your pumpkin like this and okay guys this is our this is a little pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and these are the cute little stems. This is where I got this one from. Some of my stems are real some are you know they're not real. So this happens to be a great stem on this pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. It's a foam crackle pumpkin. So we're just going to pull that out. 
and I was going to brush a little gold on these so that they looked a little bit more dressed up and these already have a little bit of a metallic so we're using this so I am going to cut this little this little bit off because I don't want that in my pumpkin so you could just glue this right on top and your pumpkin would be a little fat cute little you know taller pumpkin but I'm going to show you how to do that little pinch in the middle okay so we're just going to go straight down in the same thread we're going down through the middle into the center of our underside of the bottom of the pumpkin and we're going to string on our button okay so this is a two hole button so that you can go up through you come down through the one thread and go back up through your pumpkin and you're just kind of tacking that button in place okay you're just tacking that in so it's tufting it from the bottom and it's going to make your pumpkin have a cute little dimple on the top and you're just going to go through a couple times so with the two holes you only have one hole to go up and then one to go down you don't and you want to go through some fabric so you catch that fabric and that button you know pulls that fabric down without a button there what can happen is you're doing this and you're the larger the pumpkin and the more it's stuffed, it can put a lot of stress on this fabric and pull and pop, pop your threads. It can pop right through and put a hole in your pumpkin and that would be kind of a sad day. So, so anyways, this is how we do this. And, you know, you want to do this a few times, but not too many times. You don't really need too much. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like it's going to be worn or, or anything like that. So we're just going to go one more time through and then back through the top and we are going to secure this thread right here we're going to go through this three times that is a toy making knot I used to make lots of little felt toys and things we're going to do that twice because I like to do that twice so that it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, and that's it. We're going to take our little tiny scissors and give it a little snip. Okay, there's your cute little pumpkin with the little center pinched down. And now we're going to take our hot glue and we're going to put our hot glue into the center. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. My glue sticks are getting away from me. Okay. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue in the center of this pumpkin here and we're going to glue in our little stem. And even if you don't think you have buttons around, um, you know what, a lot of times your dress shirts, um, you know, they have either on the tag, sweaters, buttons, extra button in case it pops off of the shirt or whatever. Men's dress shirts a lot of times may have a button sewn inside on the you know seam on the tag. There's our little button. It also dresses up our work and makes this look all nice and neat. And there you go. This large one has a big button right there. And it just kind of dresses up the bottom and again takes the stress off your fabric. And this was a real stem. And it's quite a large stem. Very pretty. So most of my pumpkins do have buttons on the bottom. At least in the last few years I've been doing that. And 
These tiny ones, though, I will tell you, there's hardly anything there, and they're just so cute. So that one doesn't have anything in it, and it's so tiny, you really don't need it. Again, a little stem off of just one of the many pumpkins that I've been crafting with and everything this year. So anyways, guys, this is your Velvet Pumpkin 101. Uh, hopefully you learned something today new, and really... That's all there is to it. And so I leave you with this beautiful tray of pumpkins. And make sure that you tune in, subscribe. Thanks for watching. And like I said, all things pumpkin are going on here. I've got like five different videos. They're all different kinds of pumpkins. And they're all DIYs. So thanks so much and have a great day.